So, a little bit earlier in the meeting, I asked you what brings you joy. I wonder if any of you have thought what your answer might be. I think watching the children certainly brings me joy. Um, and it'll be really good. I'm so looking forward to when we actually can meet together again. And hopefully after the summer holidays, if everything continues, then we'll be back in person Sunday school uh, in, in the autumn. So that'll be really good. I've got something this morning which I think brings joy to many people, and particularly to young people or to our younger members. I've had to put it on this because it'll spill. See, I can see there's joy already. I've heard, I can see people smiling. I can see, hear people laughing. But bubbles, have you ever watched a young child with bubbles, uh, a bubble machine perhaps, as they go and they chase? If any of you want to come and try and chase? Please. <laughs> Andy's coming to chase bubbles. Excellent. But it is something, it just automatically seems to bring a smile to so many faces. Um, especially since it's coming out of a fish or a whale's mouth. I thought I'd keep it in the, in the theme of, of water. Um, but yeah, it's probably the smallest bubble machine I've ever seen. But it's producing a lot of bubbles for us today. I'm going to turn it off though, just because it's noisy. Do you want more bubbles? Okay, I'll just put the bubble machine on. Okay. There is just one problem with bubbles, though, and that is they don't really last, do they? If you come and you try and, and catch them, as I will try, it just bursts on your hand. Or maybe when it hits the floor, um, it, it, can, it can burst. And for young people as well, for children, and for you guys this morning, when I turned it off, there were sad faces. Um, so they're great while they're there, but they don't last for very long. Lots of people, and maybe some of us here, are chasing bubbles, chasing happiness. Um, but just like the bubbles, it maybe it's just out of reach. Or maybe when we think we've found it, sometime, um, when we think we've found it, we think we've found something to make us happy, but it doesn't last and our bubble bursts. People may be chasing after money and thinking that that will bring happiness. But it, it doesn't. Once you've spent it, it's gone, and you perhaps still don't have that happiness. Some people seek happiness in food, maybe because they're feeling a little bit down. And chocolate always makes you feel better, doesn't it? Or does it? After the chocolate's gone, we're still unhappy, and then we're overweight, so then we're even more unhappy. People may think that being popular will make them happy. And they say or do whatever they think is needed to make people like them. But again, the bubble can burst and unhappiness can return. The woman Jesus met at the well had perhaps lived her life looking for happiness in the wrong places and in the wrong people. And it had left her in a lonely place. She came to the well that day at midday. And that was unusual because mostly the women would go and collect their water early in the morning or late in the evening when it was cooler. Why was this woman on her own at the hottest part of the day? Why had she come to a well that was more than half a mile away from the village when the village itself would probably have had its own water supply? Probably because she didn't want to meet with the other women, perhaps because she was shunned by them, or gossiped about because of her past, which if you go and read the rest of the, that passage, you will find out more about. She appears quite a solitary, lonely person, an outcast from her community, and no one else in her family to draw the water for her. And then Jesus spoke to her. And again, perhaps we think there's nothing remarkable about that. Jesus talked to people all the time, didn't he? But during the time of Jesus, as it said in, in our little clip earlier, uh, women were looked down on. 
seem, they were seen as inferior to men. They had no rights. And a Jewish man just didn't talk to women in public. Not even his mother or sister or daughter or wife. It just wasn't done. In addition, for various reasons, going way back in history, there was lots of animosity between Jews and Samaritans. Jewish people didn't speak with Samaritan people. They were viewed as outcasts and unclean people. So we can perhaps understand why the woman was so surprised. Jesus spoke to a woman in public, and not just any woman, to a Samaritan woman. Jesus asked her for a drink of water, and she was understandably shocked. A Jewish man was speaking to her, a Samaritan woman. More than that, if we look at this story, we find that it's actually the longest recorded conversation that Jesus had with any one individual. And if you look at the story, you realize that this was the first person to whom Jesus openly revealed himself as the Messiah. Jesus treated her in the way that we should treat everyone with respect. And he treated her as a special person. Understanding that this man was her saviour and that he thought she was someone worth talking to changed her life that day. It brought her the joy that she'd been looking for. And so much joy that it was bubbling out of her. I love that last picture on that little uh, cartoon clip of the story. As she ran, full of joy, she ran to share it with the people who ordinarily wouldn't have given her the time of day. She went and told her people about Jesus, and she brought them to him. The people who shunned her, she still went and told them so that they could meet Jesus and get this joy for themselves. Jesus offered life-giving water to this woman, and she accepted it wholeheartedly. John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 say, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Here was a woman who found true joy and happiness that will last forever. Not a bubble that will burst and be gone in an instant, but everlasting joy. So my question for you this morning is quite simply, do you have that everlasting joy Or are you searching for happiness in things which are going to fade away like these bubbles? This morning you too can accept the gift from Jesus. It's there for the taking. And young people, as I was listening to this story, as I was looking at this story, I think there's a really special message for you today as well. This lady was lonely and didn't have many friends, and tried to avoid people. But Jesus thought she was worth talking to, and offered a special gift to. So if you ever feel lonely, remember that Jesus wants to be your friend, even if you think other people don't. And maybe it's just that reminder for all of us, to treat everyone the same, be kind to everyone, and to look out for those around us who maybe are lonely too. In a moment or two, we're going to listen to a lovely piece of music, and it has some really lovely visuals as well, which will just remind us of the story we've heard this morning. For the grown-ups in our meeting, I invite you to accept a drink of that living water again this morning. And young people, maybe ask Jesus to be your friend and ask him to help you be a friend to others. And we're going to listen and watch a presentation of the well is deep. <laughs> 